the child He trusted for the dear And he did us To feel his presence here Just like a child His mind is molded down And the thought is never brown Here I come For me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Take him number one twenty one two zero.
let us pray. O God, whose gift St. Francis was confirmed to Christ in poverty and humility, grant that by walking in Francis's footsteps, we may follow your Son, and through the joyful charity, come to be united with him. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The first reading, a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians, chapter 6, verses 14 to 18. Through Christ, the world is crucified to me and I to the world. As for me, the only thing I can boast about is the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom the world is crucified to me and I to the world. It does not matter if a person is circumcised or not. What matters is for him to become an altogether new creation. Peace and mercy to all who follow this rule who form the Israel of God. I want no more trouble from anybody after this. The marks on my body are those of Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, my brothers. Amen. The word of the Lord. <laughs>
The Lord is with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 11, verses 25 to 30. Jesus exclaimed, I bless you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for hiding these things from the learned and the clever and revealing them to mere children. Yes, Father, for that is what is pleased to do. Everything has been entrusted to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, just as no one knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal, the, chooses to reveal Him. Come to me, all you labor and are overburdened. I will give you rest. Shoulder my yoke and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Yes, my yoke is easy and my burden light. The Gospel of the Lord. We all know this beautiful song, Make me a channel of peace. Where there is hatred, let me bring love. This is one of those beautiful coined hymns by Francis of Assisi. My dear brothers and sisters, we celebrate today the memory of St. Francis of Assisi, born in the year 1187 to a very rich family and brought up in the best way possible. He was having everything, whatever he wanted, he got it because he was from a rich family and he was a very romantic man. He was also a very up-to-date man. He was so well informed as well as well-trained and he was in the army and being there such an important person he was knighted as one of those important persons from Assisi. Having been such a wonderful future ahead one day it happened that he was in the civil war he was wounded he was in the hospital then he came to know the hallowness of his spiritual life. And he said, if I'm going to be like this, I will definitely ruin my soul. Therefore, you find him taking up a new life, taking up a life in which he found that God really existed in reality. And that is how he takes up the cause of the poor. As you see, was a beautiful place where there were the rich and the very poor. The laborers were oppressed because of these rich landlords and they were oppressed so terribly that Francis of Assisi was not able to digest. He went to his dad and said, I'm going to leave, I'm going to join the congregation and I want to become a priest and serve the poor. And that is how he becomes a man for the poor. Later on you find that he gives up everything and becomes a wonderful priest. A priest who, who really worked for the poor in the hospitals, in the homes, and thereby became a darling for all the crowd. He would always find that God had really helped each and every work that he took up. One Christmas night, when he was coming back along with his father, his father gave him a beautiful gift for Christmas. And as he was taking that gift and going, his father thought that he would treasure this gift. But 
when a poor man extended his hand, he gave that gift which his father gave him. And he said, you keep it. And his father was surprised. He was not able to understand the mind of Francis. And when Francis, after going a little further, he turned around to see the reaction of this poor man. He turned around when his father was taking him and going back to his house. He turned around to see what is the reaction of this poor man who received this beautiful gift. At that time, he did not see that poor man, but it was Jesus who was waving his hands. Ever since then, he said, it is for the poor I will work. And he took up this cause. He went to Rome from Assisi, and he wanted to meet the Pope, but they did not allow him. And therefore, you will find one of those statues in front of uh, the old Pope's house in Rome, the statue which avoids Francis from entering into the Vatican. That shows that they were not willing to allow this man, an ordinary priest, to come into meet the Pope to tell the plight of the poor farmers as well as the laborers. Later on, his persuasion did not stop. He met the Pope, and ever since then, the oppression of those laborers was no more seen in Assisi. This is how he became a real worker for the poor. But you find that he took up this task to show that God can be a real friend for all. He later on was a great lover of nature. You know, in the 12th century itself, 12th and 13th century itself, he speaks about global warming, what is happening today. St. Francis speaks about it. And therefore he says, I consider the sun as my brother, the moon as my sister, and the earth as my mother. And therefore, I have to save my brother, my mother, and my sister. That is how he also says that we have to save our land, our earth, our nature, so that we may have a love for the nature. That is why you find Pope Francis also harping on the global warming and how we can arrest the global warming. Today, if you speak about St. Francis of Assisi, he's a great lover of animals as well. He loves all the animals, and today is the day where many people bring animals to the parish priest, and the parish priest blesses all these animals. You know, you should have brought your animals today, because today is the day where in the, through the intercession of St. Francis of Assisi, we bless all the animals. And to show that, St. Francis had so much of love for animals. And he always wanted these animals to become real pets and friends of every person. And that is the reason why you will find in the statue of St. Francis of Assisi, beautiful pigeons sitting around his shoulder to show that he loved all these animals, birds, and the nature. Today, my dear friends, when we celebrate this great feast of St. Francis of Assisi, let us learn few of his traits. Let us learn few of his habits so that we may save nature, we may save creatures as we are being entrusted with them. That is why Heavenly Father says, you will have dominion over all creatures. That is what we hear in the second book of Genesis, second chapter. Second chapter of Genesis says that you will have dominion over all creatures. You will not have dominion over men or human beings. Dominionship is only on creatures that we are entrusted with. Therefore, let us save and protect our nature and all the creatures that God has blessed us. Having this devotion to the infant Jesus, just like how an infant child 
loves all the beautiful things of the nature, let us learn to love all that is entrusted to us. Let us all stand for the prayer of the faithful. Heavenly Father, your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, taught us to ask all that we need in his name with confidence. Hear the prayers of all your children who have gathered here. Infant Jesus, hear our prayer. the design of your holy will, even if our prayers are not answered in the way we expect. Grant this to the same infant Jesus the Lord. Brothers and sisters, that the sacrifice of yours and mine may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for, for the, the praise, praise and glory of his name, name for, for our good and good of all this holy church. As we bring you these offerings, O Lord, we pray that you may be rightly disposed for the celebration of the mystery of the cross with which St. Francis so ardently embrace through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is 
It is truly really right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of St. Francis of Assisi, you bid your church rejoice, so do you strengthen her by the example of his holy life, teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with all the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Lord God of power and might, Holy Creator of the world, Heaven and earth the voices raise, Hosanna to the Lord most high, Blessed and holy is the one, Who comes to spread the Father's world, You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving you thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, to Mabala, our bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, our spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all your saints, especially as we celebrate the memory of St. Francis of Assisi, and all who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coheirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours 
forever and ever. the Savior's command and formed by Jesus' divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Love and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the peace of Christ. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, may the meaning of the body and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us and receive it. And may the receiving of the body and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ not bring us to judgment and condemnation, but we are loving mercy be for us protection in mind and body and a healing remedy and resurrection from the dead. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are you who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen. Master, grant that I may never see. So, 
much to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love with all my soul. Make me a channel of your Please take him number 411, 411. Take this all of you, eat of this my flesh. Take this is my blood, shed for sinners all for my life I give. we pray, O Lord, through these holy gifts which we have received, that imitating the charity and the apostolic zeal of St. Francis, we may experience the gifts of your love and spread them everywhere for the salvation of all. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord is with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Let us all kneel for the... O Jesus, who has said, Ask and you shall receive, seek and you shall find, knock and it shall be opened to you. Through the intercession of Mary, thy most holy mother, I knock, I seek, and I ask that my prayer be granted. O Jesus, who has said, All that you ask of the Father in my name, he will grant through the intercession of Mary, thy most holy mother, I humbly and urgently ask thy Father in thy name that my prayer be granted. O oh, Jesus, who has said, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass. Through the intercession of Mary, thy most holy mother, I feel confident that my prayer be granted. Now in our prayer, O tender, loving Jesus, your greatest joy is to dwell among us 
and to bestow your blessing upon us. Though I am not worthy that you should behold me with love, I feel myself drawn to you, dear infant Jesus, because you gladly pardon me and exercise your almighty power over me. So many who would turn with confidence to you have received the graces and had their petitions granted. Behold, I kneel before your miraculous image on the altar and upon a part of you with prayers and petitions and hopes. I entrust especially to your loving heart this petition of mine. Govern me and do with me and mine according to your holy will. For I know in your divine wisdom and love you will ordain everything for the best. Almighty, gracious infant Jesus, do not withdraw your hand from us, but protect and bless us forever. I pray, sweetest infant, in the name of your blessed Mother Mary, who cared for you with such tenderness and by the great reverence with which St. Joseph carried you in his arms, comfort and make us happy that I may bless and thank you forever with all my heart. Amen. Hail Mary.